always trying to trick somebody, Ben. It's tricking my, I tricked myself that time. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I started the podcast and and I didn't hit record. <laughs> hey, we were like an hour in. <laughs> hey, guys, welcome to another episode of the Brokepreneur Podcast. I am Dr. Ben Spears, the, the ambassador, ambassador of flow. flow. I'm here with the, the big, big guy. guy, Matt. As always, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Matt. Bye. How you doing, Matt? Absolutely fantastical. Yeah. <laughs> ben said I was making up words in the last podcast, so I figured I'd go with fantastical bully. Yeah, fantastically bully. So that's Matt, what happens when I have too much coffee. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. You know, yeah. you got, you're on your like your sixth tumbler of iced coffee. Absolutely, easily the sixth in so, the last twenty minutes. Yeah. So Matt. Yeah, Ben. On our last podcast, we yep. we were talking about six things. Right. We talked about three of them in depth, right? And we and then we get we kind of said, you know, here are the other three. We'll right. talk about those later. It's later, right? Right. So 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 tell us, you know, f- for someone who's maybe like this is their first time listening or they didn't hear that yeah. last one, um, let's tell everybody. You don't have to go all through, through all through all three. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll just I'll recap them really quick. Okay, cool. Hopefully that's a. Hopefully I didn't mean that's... to. Add, I didn't mean to add like extra. No, nah, it's all good. <laughs> then Matt's low is. <laughs> Um. Uh, what are you doing, Ben? <laughs> you you opened up your laptop, so the the TV is like took over. He's like, uh, okay, I'll take over. That's just, that's so me. Yeah, that's a that is a classic Matt. R- Walk in right the room there. and take over. Yeah, I don't want to be this way, Ben. I just am. <laughs> yeah, I don't want you to be that way. You just are. <laughs> well, thanks, Ben. <laughs> Is this an intervention? It feels Dude, like an I'm intervention. Like, here, I'm like Mr. I'm like, this is the truth. And I gave you a hard time. I'm like Mr. Rogers, dude. I mm. love you just the way you are, man. <laughs> well, appreciate right? that. Like, whatever. <laughs> I love you in spite of how terrible you are, Matt. That's what I just heard. <laughs> so let's uh, let's keep it moving with the people that are well, I'm just going to move right off the topic. You see that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. So are you new to being a recruiting broker? Right. Mm -hmm. So that means, you know, we talked about the definitions before. There's a difference between a broker and a recruiter and a recruiting broker. Right. Things are just different. Right. And broker owner and all that stuff. Manager. So so there were six things that that you really have to kind of keep in mind as you're launching or or progressing through that uh, that that uh, way of of succeeding in that in that role. Okay. So, uh, so number one is you got to leverage tech correctly, right? We yep. dug into, we dug into that quite a bit. Number two is, uh, there's somebody saying it's a numbers game is a load of crap. It's not a numbers game. It's a, it's a relationship game, but the number one rule is numbers, right? Yep. Number three is teamwork makes the dream work, right? Phil Jackson. Yeah. You crushed it that time. That's man. right. Instead of Phil Knight, Phil the Nike Collins, guy, right? <laughs> that's about how far off I was. <laughs> oh, so, so you have to make sure that you've got a team, but that means you got to kind of dig into who's on your team, which we're actually going to talk a little bit about that in, in these last three today. But, and then, and so that brings us to the next four, right? Yep. So that's the, that's the, the first three. Number, number four is kind of expect the best, but plan for the worst. Yep. Right. And so, so, you know, whenever we talk about planning, you know, we mean, are you getting ready to go into number four? I am. Okay. Guys, wherever you're listening to this, <laughs> uh, make sure you hit that follow button. Uh, there's no better time than the present. <laughs> Matt. <laughs> there's no better time than the present than to go to prospectboomerang.com uh, and sign up for a free account. Just click that green button, and uh, and I'll send you an invite to join our free real estate recruiting mastermind where we get to know more about you, your business, and hopefully let you guys know more about us and ours. So when I walk in a uh, room, what happens again? <laughs> you just start talk. You just take over, man. <laughs> One day I'm going to be able to walk into a room and not have to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, December first, uh, Florida's adding you to the force majeure. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ben, to be specific, is actually November first. <laughs> well, no, that's something else. I gave him a month. <laughs> oh, I got you. Gave him an extra thirty days to get ready. <laughs> yeah, can't add two at one time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, sorry, can I? Yeah, do your thing, man. Number four. Number four. Expect the best, but plan for the worst, right? Yeah. So, uh, so being a recruiting manager, you know, you've got to have your head wrapped around financial planning, what's going on in the office. Yeah. Okay. So, 
the financial planning of what you're doing impacts the agents that you're recruiting. Yep. It impacts how efficiently you can do your job. It impacts where you need to spend your time, prioritization, all that kind of stuff. You got to have some financial planning in, in place. You have to know how many agents you have to hire. What are you going to, you know, don't just hire them so that you can get numbers up and hope that you're going to make money. That all of that doesn't, you, it can't be haphazard. Absolutely. There, there's financial planning that has to go into, into, into every bit of that. Right. But along with that, hand in hand, really has to be the leadership planning as well. Okay, yep. and that's actually our action item. We're actually going to talk a little bit more, a little bit more about that. But, mm-hmm. but the leadership planning is taking a look around your office and understanding what's going on in your office, so that as you spend more times on things that are a priority, other things are not falling between the cracks. Right? Yeah. So the the cool thing about you know having a, a, an office with a great culture is, your uh, you, you've got a ton of people that want to contribute. If yeah. you've got a good culture, if you've got a collaborative culture, you've got a ton of people that really want to kind of rise to the occasion. And they don't want a ton, they, a bunch of them don't want a tremendous amount of responsibility, but they do want uh, enough responsibility where they, where they can get some recognition for it yep. and be able to, to apply their wares to help other people, right? Yep. But, but then they want to get back to doing what they're comfortable doing, right? Yeah. So, uh, and then the, and then the third thing, whenever it comes to, uh, whenever it comes to making sure that you have, that you're planning for the planning for the worst is compliance, right? Yes. Compliance is always changing. You, you mentioned force majeure just a, just a minute ago, right? <clears throat> so in Florida, you know, there's some updates that have to do with the pandemic with force majeure, right? So the, the truth is you need to, you need to make sure that from a compliance standpoint that you have things in place and that you have someone that's helping you stay ahead of what is changing and what is shifting in the market so that you don't get caught in a bad place, not keeping up with things the way that you're supposed to. Here's, here's the reason why from a recruiting standpoint, right? If your agents don't know that the contract change, if you're still using the same contract from 2014 (laughs) and your agents and you haven't stayed up with compliance, you look like an idiot in the market, right? Okay. Period. Yep. The other agents are talking about you and they're talking about your brokerage. Yeah. They're saying those idiots are using the 2014 contract. Yeah. How hard does that make recruiting? Yeah, it makes it makes it tough unless it's a brand new agent. Who, or if it's a bunch of agents that want to use a 2014 contract. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. That's like, a good one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like a wine. <laughs> that's right. 2024. <laughs> Yeah, that was a good year for contracts. Yeah, that, was a, that was a really good year. I think I'm going to stick with that one and forget all the things that have, that have right? I'll see you in court. <laughs> so so compliance is something that you have to prepare for the worst on, yeah. right? I mean, you have to – It's things are going to change. They're not going to be as good as they were. You have to have a plan for staying ahead of – having a plan for staying ahead of all of that, right? Yeah. And, well, oh, go ahead. No, 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 no. Come no, and, 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 and part of that – um, stems from, stems from, you know, not, not only the value that you deliver, but also, you know, the culture that you have in your office. So we talk a lot about, you know, having, having a culture of growth. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but you know, where, where does that necessarily, where does it comes from? Mm-hmm. And, and that, that's all about the delivery of that value. Absolutely. hundred percent. And, and speaking of that, right. So, you know, that kind of takes us to the next one, right? Is you have to have your culture and you have to be working on your culture every day, yes. right? You have to be having conversations. If you want a culture of growth, culture of growth is not saying, I want to do more production this year. Y'all get to work, right? Yeah. That's not a culture of growth. That is a dictate of growth. <laughs> that is a command of growth. That <laughs> yes. is a dream of growth. That is a goal of growth. That is not a culture of growth, uh, yeah. right? So you have to you you have to do those little things every day in order to make sure that you're demonstrating who it is that you actually are and it is completely okay i know we talked about this before but if if your whole office if the entire culture of your office is just about being the market share leader and you want to be the most productive people in the market rock the hell on i love it mm-hmm. go do it right yeah. be that own that wear that get the t-shirt right yep. I, I love that but what you can't do is you can't act like you're one thing and be another because that's negatively going to impact your recruiting. Yes. Right? Who you th- who you act like every day is what your culture is about. And then that is what everyone sees in the marketplace. Yeah. And if you want to attract people, if you want to be the gravity, if you want to have that gravity that pulls the people in, then that that's only created by you doing certain things every day yep. and it being supported by the other things that the other people that you're doing every day are doing in tandem with what you're doing. They're collaborating with you on getting the word out about that culture. Yeah. 
Um, but that, but that, um, you know, we're talking, about, we're talking about value there for a second. All, all of those steps that you're talking about, as far as leading to a, a culture of growth, mm -hmm. right? Like they have to, like they, they first and foremost have to be simple, mm -hmm. right? Correct. And so, um, you know, what, what, what does that look like? You know, from a, you know, I know what it looks like necessarily from, from the podcast mm -hmm. or company, right. that kind of thing, right? You've got all this experience, um, in, in real estate. Let's share, let's share with the brokers and, and, and the owners and the recruiting manager out there. What, what does simple value delivery, uh, leading toward that culture of growth? What does, what does that actually look like? Yeah. So, uh, so, uh, I would think a, a simple one, if your culture is about collaboration, if your culture is about, you know, sharing and guiding and helping people and stuff like that, when, when someone does some, when you catch someone doing something great, put, take a picture of whatever it was, mm -hmm. put it on social media yep. and say, I'm so proud to be the broker of the, of, of this office. You know, Betty Sue was just struggling with a listing on, you know, that was her first listing. And before I got a chance to go over there and talk to her about doing an open house, Jimmy Joe walked up and I overheard them talking about how to, you know, how to take that to that next level. Couldn't be more proud of you guys. Hashtag we kick ass or whatever it is. Right. Yeah. Th that is simple. Once you do that. And once you and you've done that several times and you tell your administrative staff, hey, I need you to be on the lookout for great stuff like this. When you see it, either post it yourself or tell me and I can post it yep. or tell the person, somebody else that oversees it for them to post it. As soon as that starts happening, all of a sudden you're out there all over the place with that happening. Yeah. Right. And it's not going to be, hey, I was walking around my office and this great thing happens. What's going to happen is your agents are going to bump. They're going to be at church working in the working in the 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 food line right yeah and they're gonna and they're gonna see another agent from another company that's also working in the food line and they're gonna stand there and they're gonna take a picture next to each other and say you know a couple of the best realtors in town you know helping people beyond just finding a house that is the culture that you want it has to be simple and it has to start from that basic level of let's do this Let's tell everybody it's okay to do this. Let's congratulate them and 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 uh, tell them we appreciate them doing this over and over. And then they start doing it, and that's who you become because you're doing those simple, valuable things every day. Hey, guys, this podcast is powered by Prospect Boomerang. We all know broker owners struggle with profitability. Prospect Boomerang compounds your profits by recruiting the best agents to your brokerage. For consistent growth, visit prospectboomerang.com. Yeah, and that's cool. And and you know, too too many times I think you know brokers, um, just business owners in, in in general, look and they think like, gosh, you know, my value, my value that I offer needs to be like like uber specific. Mm -hmm. Whereas that's that's a pretty broad value add, mm -hmm. and 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 most most value adds leading toward that that yep. culture of growth should be broad. Absolutely. Completely agree. Yeah. So, so I mean the, the truth or the fundamentals or the, or the basics or the foundation is a lot of companies do a lot of great things, a lot mm -hmm. of real estate. Okay. Yep. Very few of them put on display the great things that they do. Yeah. Right. Because they're, they're like, Oh, I'm too humble for that. Right. I don't want to do that because, okay. Or, or, yeah. or I don't have time for that shit or whatever it is. Right. Yep. I get it. Rock on. That doesn't mean that you can't have your, the people in your office, actually do some of those things it doesn't mean that you can't have the people in your office be comfortable starting to do those things right when when you kick that off and you're saying this is our culture and this is who we are now all of a sudden there's there's it uh what you're doing and how you're delivering it and the and the message is simple but it can cover a broad category of things that happening that are integrity and values and and discipline and doing the right thing for your client and whatever else it is that you want to call it yeah so now there's this broad group of things that are being done the way that they're supposed to but they're getting the recognition they should because everyone is proud of doing it yeah right if you got 50 people in your office and somebody does that once a week, each person do that once a, once a week, that's a year's worth of PR that you just couldn't get. Right. Oh, yeah. And, and the cool thing is, is it's all so easily consumed. Yep. Right. And, 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 and once you can, once you can, um, once you can spread that culture throughout the office, just like, just like you're saying, then you're not doing your recruiting on your own. Right. Right. Cause, cause too many, too many times, like, you know, we've spoken with brokers and like, gosh, all my all my agents they just they just love it they they love the office or they're they're super protective of the office 
or they just you know they love everything about it and they think i'm just you know i always get the cup that says like number one broker right. in the world or something like that and then we say awesome like how many how many brand ambassadors can we get our hands on right and then it's like well, i could think of this one guy right or these two people and 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 it really you know makes us start saying like okay like we, we were talking about how like everybody in the office just loves everything right. but now we can only come up with with one or two as soon as you start having everybody do this everybody in your everybody in your office is a brand ambassador absolutely and, and, and all of their all of their spheres are impacted yes. right then that's whenever that's whenever who you are and what you are as a broker a uh, broker recruiter goes market wide yes right that's when that that's when that that's when that yeah. happens for and, sure yeah and that kind of leads us in, leads us into the next one whereas yeah we're talking about the actual agents in the office and and doing those things but that that type of um that type of value and that type of culture spreads into customers absolutely right and so um just like we talked about on the last podcast uh, you know, you're talking about, you know, uh, your, your shop teacher. Yeah, Hank. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and he was, you know, you could hear him saying something, you know, along the lines of, uh, you know, the customer is always, is always right. But uh, whether they're right or wrong, the customer is always the customer. Absolutely. Right. So talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah. So, so the, uh, what he would, what he would, I think it was him. Yeah. Uh, right. So, you know, we, you know, as a kid and everything growing up, you know, you always hear, you know, or in business, you always hear, you know, the customer's always right. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and what he said, or some other brilliant person like him said was, you know, the customer's not always right, but they're always the customer. Yeah. Right. That means that they have to be treated, a, they have to be treated a certain way. Yeah. And so what we want to do is kind of dig into what that means. How do they actually, how do they actually get treated? Right? Yeah. You got to listen to them, right? Yeah. Number one is you have to truly listen. You got to ask good questions and then you have to slow down and listen for the, you got to slow down and listen for the answers, right? Mm -hmm. You got to hear, truly absorb what it is that they're saying. Don't ask a question so that you can just craft the response that you want to say. Okay. Yeah. Ask the question to truly listen to what it is that they're that they're asking you. Yeah, right. and, and and you have to track that kind of stuff. Absolutely. And then and then make and then make adjustments because they're not always right, mm -hmm. right? And so uh, you know, of course, we're going to talk about that topic. But you afterward, you kind of have to be the guide, right? Right. Guide them toward right. Um, don't just say you're wrong. Right. Right. That's dumb. Right. That's dumb customer. Right. <laughs> right. Or that isn't really what you wanted. Yeah. I was prepared to do this. So what yeah. you're asking me really isn't right. <laughs> I know you said four beds, but this one, this one bed, <laughs> one bed, half bath. It's got your name written all over that's it. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We want to try to avoid that type of, <laughs> that type of guidance. Yeah. The, the only way that you can really treat the customer, the, you know, and never forget that they are the customer is if you listen, listen to hear what they're, what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, you, you mentioned just a second ago, you know, track and adjust, you know, part of that means you want to, you want to track the answers that you're hearing over and over, especially from a recruiting standpoint. Yep. If you, so, so let's say that you had two recruiting appointments per day. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you had 20 days of that, right? So that's yep. 40 recruiting appointments and all of them said, I really want help with marketing. Right. Don't you think that you're, what you're doing from a recruiting standpoint needs to approach marketing better or at least sooner in the conversation. Yeah. That's why we track it. We, we track what you're hearing from them. We track whenever you're talking to them and you're interacting with them. We track it in a way that it tells us how to make adjustments based on what our market is because none of our markets are the same. Yeah. Right. There's, there's certain fundamentals, but none of them are the same. So we track those things so that we can make adjustments and make the interviews better, make the appointment setting process better. Right. Yeah. But then that kind of brings us to, you know, the guide part that you were talking about just a second ago. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're wrong. Yes. Okay. They're, they're never not the customer, right? We talked about that, but they're, but sometimes they're wrong. So when you truly listen and you're tracking things and you're keeping up with stuff and, and you're, and you're intelligent about the conversations that you're having and how you're having and why you're having and everything, it's easy for you to say, well, well, Ben, you know, I, I, I hear that you're saying that marketing is a, is a critical component of, of what you're doing and, and how it would impact your business. But before you dig into the, the marketing part of that, you know, maybe we should, maybe we should look at cost revenue and expenses overall, what you're spending your current marketing dollars on to see if there's some other place that we could adjust those dollars. Yeah. That means that you're really listening in the conversation. You're, you're acknowledging that they're the customer, Yep. but that doesn't mean that they're always right. 
Right. And so, so at that point you can guide them and hopefully what's happening is you're having good enough conversations so that they're telling you things that you can then offer the solution that your company does offer once you've truly listened to what their problem is, yep. once you've truly dug in. No, yep, absolutely. So I know we have an action item. Yep. Right. We're going to get to that in just a second. Uh, guys, wherever you listen to this, uh, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Deezer, any of those platforms, make sure you hit that follow button. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, make sure you hit that, that red subscribe button, that bell right beside of it. Get notified every time we drop a new episode. If you want to watch and listen to all these in the same place, go to prospectboomerang.com. Click on uh, podcast right at yep. the top and, and takes us uh, takes you to every single one of those. So, Matt. Yeah. Action item. Tell, tell, tell me tell me what we're doing. Yeah, so we kind of touched on this a little bit before, but this is really worth, uh, especially as your recruiting systemization grows, right? If you've already got a recruiting system, you know how important this is. If you don't have a recruiting system yet, uh, this is something that you're going to have to have in place, okay? Okay. You need to look around your office at, the, at, at either every agent in your office or the top 10%, depending on the size of your office, okay? okay. If you've got a bigger office, you don't want to do this with every agent in the office. But, but you, know, you make that cutoff. If you're not sure, reach out to us, and we'll help you know exactly where that number is. But find your potential leaders, right? Yep. So we talked about this a little bit earlier. You, know, you've got, you, have some, uh, you have some agents in your office that want to help. Yes, and as you're being that recruiting broker and you're getting up and running and you're getting things in place and, and, and again, you're leveraging your system and everything and learning how to do a better job with, a, with your system, you, there's going to be some things that fall between the cracks, right? One of, the, one of the, the smarter things that I did early on was I found a contract specialist in an in, in office that I was managing, okay? okay? The contract specialist, their job was to teach the contract, not how to do the contract, Right. That's a, that's a whole different conversation. Right. But just the ins and outs of how the contract works. And it was the contract that was most often used in, in the market that we were that, that we were in. Yeah. What it means. That's exactly right. Yeah. So so that was that was huge for, mm-hmm. for me. You know what a time saver that was? You know how many answers that that cut off at the pass? And also now the agent goes into the market with a with a whole different swagger to them, right? Oh yeah, they're like, hey, you know, I know, right? So so that's what we want. We want them to have that. Then the only way that could happen is if I is that I reached out to people and I was looking for someone that was a tech specialist and I was looking at someone that was a contract specialist and I looked at someone that was a was a, an an agency specialist and I had someone that was a financing specialist other than the the mortgage lenders that I dealt with. So I had these people that were quote unquote my specialists so that everybody knew who to go to whenever they ask a question. If you have an assistant manager, if you have a mentor, you know, I've I've always said, you know, the the great thing about a mentor, what they do really well, you learn how to do really well. And what they suck at, you learn how to do really well too. So so a a mentor should be compartmentalized, right? It should be, what is it that this person does really well? Don't answer any other questions for me. Answer and stay in this and stay in this lane. Yeah. And, and if you've got somebody that's the perfect mentor, rock on, go use them. That, that's not what I'm saying, but most people just, it, it isn't that way. Okay? Yeah. So go around your office, find out what some of those leaders can be and start leveraging them because that's going to free up your time so you can do more of the things that you need to and do a better job from a recruiting standpoint. No, I like it. Well, you know, we're going to go into our fast track, our fast track wrap up. Yep. Um, but before we do, yep. let's, let all, let's let all of our, our listeners know why we do this we do this for one reason and one, one reason, reason only and why to, is that Matt? it's because we want to be part of their win ben <laughs> <laughs> it's the creepiest ending ever <laughs> 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 